friends and welcome to Science Ago. Science Ago is a group made by two little sisters named Anya and Arushi. Yay! Today's topic is Earth's makeup, or maybe you can say the layers of the Earth. So let's begin. What is Earth made of? Earth is made up of many layers. However, there are three distinct layers: crust, mantle, core. Each distinct layer has layers within. So here's a very nice picture of the crust, mantle, and core. Be sure to stay for the last interesting quiz. Scientific evidence suggests that the Earth has layers. Much like a golf ball, if you examine a golf ball sliced in half, you can see that the outer layer is different in texture and the composition from the inner layers. Similarly, the Earth's layer are different from each other. The layers can be divided based on physical properties. The differences in the physical properties include whether or not a layer is a solid or liquid, how weak or strong it is believed to be, and what it is made of. And now we have the first layer, the, the crust. crust. Rock and salts make up the Earth's surface, which is called the crust. The crust is often referred to as the outer shell of the Earth. There are two types of crust. The first one is continental crust and the second is the oceanic crust. The continental crust forms the continents or land masses on the surface of the earth. It averages from about 35 to 45 kilometers in thickness. It is composed mainly of granite but also includes other igneous rocks as well as sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks. The oceanic crust is the second crust which is also known as the seabed. Part of the earth's surface that lies below the oceans is the oceanic crust, averaging from about 7 kilometers thick, composed mainly of basaltic rock and igneous rock formed from cooled magma. The oceanic crust has an upper layer of sediment that is deposited on the basaltic rock layer. And here's a nice picture of the crust. So, this is the continental crust which forms the continents and the land masses on the surface of the earth. These are the sediment deposits and here the sea level isn't mentioned but it's zero kilometers. Here we have the oceanic crust on the seabed. This is the lithosphere which we are going to talk about in the later. The mantle, the layer of the earth just below the crust. Divided into two main layers, lithosphere and asthenosphere. It is difficult to know what lies below the earth's surface because we have not been able to drill deep enough to find out. The deepest land-based hole is in the Kola Peninsula in Russia and it reaches to the depth of 12 kilometers. There is also a research vessel named Chikyu that is designed to drill holes in the ocean floor where the crust is thinner. As of yet, this hasn't been successful because of the high pressure and temperature beneath the Earth's surface. Geologists gain information about the depth of the different layers using a variety of observation, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and seismic readings. Seismic. The Kola Super Deep Borehole, which we just talked about, was just 9 inches in diameter, but at 40,230 feet or you can say 12,262 meters, rains as the deepest hole. It took almost 20 years to reach that 7.5 miles, only half the distance or less to the mantle. And here we have the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. 
Here we have the world's tallest building, which is the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, and it's 0.8 kilometers high. This is the sea level. This thing. And here we have the Mount Everest, the highest mountain in the world, and it's 8.9 kilometers high. And this is the deepest active mine, which is 3.9 kilometers deep. Here we have the Mariana Trench, which is in the Pacific Ocean, which is the deepest point in the Earth's surface. And this is 10.9 kilometers deep, even deeper than the Mount Everest. And you can't imagine how much did humans dig. It is the Kola Deep Super Borehole, which is 12.3 kilometers deep, even deeper than Mariana Trench. Now we have the lithosphere. It is the upper layer of the mantle. Rigid cool shell about 100 kilometers thick. Divided into separate regions are plates, which are the tectonic plates which move because of the motion in the asthenosphere, which is the second layer of the mantle. The crustal land must sit on top of these plates. These are made up of different types of chemical materials. The evidence suggests that the lithosphere is rigid and inflexible. For example, when different plates scrap against each other, the plates do not deform or change shape significantly, suggesting that the plates are rigid. Volcanic activity tends to cluster at the edges of the plates with little or no activity occurring at the center. It is difficult for molten material below the lithosphere and the crust to penetrate through these layers and come to the surface. And that's why we don't have so much of molten magma on the surface of the earth. And here we have a cool picture about the lithosphere. It's basically the mantle. Here's the oceanic crust, the continental crust, and these both together form the crust. Here we have the upper mantle, which is also called the lithosphere. And here, this is the asthenosphere, which is the second part of the mantle. Or maybe you can say that asthenosphere is below the lithosphere. The asthenosphere. The lithosphere sit on this softer layer. Astheno is the Greek word for weak. The rock at the top part of the asthenosphere is under extreme pressure due to the weight of the lithosphere and the crust above it. Scientists believe that the extreme pressure creates high heat and causes the minerals in the rock to melt. Because of the high heat and extreme pressure, the asthenosphere is believed to have a putty-like texture, allowing it to move around. It's too deep to sample, so it is extremely hard to gather information. However, scientists do observe how seismic waves travel and how they change their speed. This can help determine the type of materials found within the asthenosphere. The asthenosphere may extend as far down as 700 kilometers. Rigid lithosphere plates can move because they sit upon the plastic putty-like asthenosphere. It is also thought that the currents in the Earth's inner layers cause these plates to move. This is likened to convection. Convection is the transfer of heat by the movement of molecules. And here we have the mantle and all the things that lie above the mantle. So these are the two plates, which is basically the lithosphere plate. Here it's the asthenosphere, and convection currents tend to occur in the lithosphere. So here, convection is happening. Cooler parts are here, and the hotter ones are here. So here, the hotter one rises up because it's lighter, and the cooler one sinks down. And this happens and happens and happens. This is likened to convection, and so the plates move. The 
core. The core is at the center of the earth and is divided into two layers, the outer core and the inner core. These two cores are believed to be composed of the elements of nickel and iron. The outer core behaves like a liquid layer which is approximately 2,270 kilometers thick. The inner core behaves like a solid layer whose radius is approx 1,200 kilometers. It can reach temperatures of up to 6,700 degrees Celsius. That's a lot, and that's actually the surface of the sun. And now, we have the Earth. This is the crust, the upper layer. Here we have the mantle, and here it is not shown that the asthenosphere and the lithosphere are here, but actually they are. Here we have the outer core, and here is the inner core, and the inner core is the most inner layer, and it's the most hottest. The crust is where we live, right? We live on continents, so we live on the crust. Yay! Now we have our quiz. What is the innermost layer of the Earth? Time is ticking. Time's up. It's the inner core, because it's the innermost layer, as seen over here. What is outermost layer of the Earth? The options are inner core, outer core, mantle, and the crust. Time's ticking. Time's up. It's the crust. Which layer of the Earth is a solid and why? Options. The inner core is a solid because of the movement of the outer core. The inner core is a solid because of low pressure and low freezing temperatures. The inner core is solid because of a balance between hot and cold temperatures. The inner core is solid because of the high pressure that drops the temperature inside the core. The inner core is solid because of high sky pressure and temperatures. Time is ticking. Time's up. It's option E. The inner core is solid because of the high sky pressure and the temperatures. Next question. Which layer lies directly above the outer core? Time's ticking. You are again right. It's the asthenosphere. Here, it lies directly above the outer core, so it's of course the asthenosphere. How hot is the inner core of the Earth? A. 5,700 degrees Celsius B. 270 degrees Celsius C. 2,700 degrees Celsius and D. 6,700 degrees Celsius They all have 7 and 0. It's time for you to find out which one's the correct. Time is ticking. You are again right. It's option D, which is 6,700 degrees Celsius. And that's it. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe.